This is Q13 News at 11. And now on Q13 News, a woman is dead and a gunman on the loose after a violent home invasion in Lakewood. What police believe was likely the motive. Also a look at recovery efforts as our region starts to dry off after major flooding when we could possibly see more rain. And we're hearing from a Washington woman trapped aboard a cruise ship because of the coronavirus outbreak. How she and passengers on board are coping with cabin fever. But first, we begin tonight in Snohomish County, where Everett officials say even though crime is down, people who live in their city report not feeling safe, and they're looking to change that. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Aliana Gomez. And I'm David Rose. The focus for city leaders is getting police numbers not just to full staff, but adding even more positions. Everett city leaders say as the city has grown, it's been difficult for the police department to keep up. Right now, for every 1,000 people in Everett, there are fewer than two officers. And answering about 150,000 calls for service service per year keeps police busy. Police Chief Dan Templeman says making his community feel safer is all about having more visible officers. To be able to get out of our police cars, to be able to walk the neighborhoods, to be able to interact with our business community, our residents in the neighborhoods, um, and provide a greater sense of visibility and a greater sense of security for all those who live and visit the city of Everett. And taking a look at the numbers, the city is currently budgeted for 206 positions. They currently have 201 officers on staff. The city's goal is to add two dozen more officers to their budget by 2022, increasing the total number of officers in the city to 230. Well, a stranger danger alert tonight. Investigators in Edmonds and Linwood need your help identifying a green car believed to be involved in several possible child luring incidents. Detectives say since January 23rd, there have been three incidents reported by children in the Edmonds Linwood area. Now, the most recent incident was just yesterday. The children say the unknown green car either drives up to them or nearby, either lingers or speeds away. In all three cases, the children, unknown to each other, were rattled enough to report it to their parents immediately. It has been the same description in all three incidents, uh, both of the ones at Edmonds, a green sedan type vehicle. Uh, and today, one of our officers was able to uh, do a neighborhood canvas and get some video uh, that had some uh, images of a green car leaving the area. So we're hoping that, that somebody identifies that car or at least knows who's driving it and we can talk to them. If you have any information on this case, you're asked to call the Edmonds Police Department's tip line. That number is on your screen. It's 425-771-0212. Investigators say if you or your child see anything suspicious, call 911. Right now, detectives in Puyallup need your help to identify a suspect. They say robbed a bank in the South Hill. It's actually a Pierce County Sheriff's Department case. Detectives say this person went into the Chase Bank inside the Fred Meyer on Meridian Avenue carrying a black backpack and a briefcase. The victim teller said it was a male suspect, a man wearing multiple layers of clothing. Uh, that guy handed a bank teller a note saying he was armed with a bomb. He demanded cash and then he ran off. So if you know his name, if you have any video of him, if you have any photos of him, a Facebook picture, anything at all, you can submit that anonymously through the P3 Tips app that you can download to your cell phone for free. You can message the Pierce County Sheriff's Department on their Facebook page, or you can call the Crime Stoppers hotline right there at the bottom of your screen. Well, people who live near the Nisqually River are starting to dry off after major flooding forced them from their homes. And today is the first time some residents of Riverside Manor Apartments returned home after being evacuated. Property managers tell us building B was hit the hardest, and they estimate about 12 homes may have flood damage. We spoke to one resident who says eight inches of water spilled into his bottom level apartment and he spent the entire day cleaning and trying to salvage some of his belongings. There, there's old people, there's sick people, there's, you know, single mothers that are all right now. Nobody knows what we're going to have to do. Property managers say they're waiting for insurance to look at the damage and figure out what repairs need to be done. Thurston County Emergency Management says it's making a plan of all the resources needed for impacted areas like Riverside Manor. All right, let's talk about our forecast uh, and just see whether the weather is going to continue to give us a few showers or if we continue to have a break. Yeah, a few showers, uh, a few showers. That's it for tonight overnight, and it's good because it's coming overnight and it's not strong. It's not powerful. Mm -hmm. It's not flooding. So tomorrow we end up dry. 
Dry, a dry Wednesday. Cool. Let's go out there and yeah. show you what's going on. Uh, tonight, it's kind of that, you know, leftover stuff. Um, we have a very weak front that came through earlier today. It started the rain in Snohomish County, Skagit County, and now you can see it's starting to drift here into King County, but it's only going to last a little bit. Whenever a convergence zone starts moving, when it makes its move from, you know, north to south, then that means it's weakening and dying. So by the time we get to 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, we won't have any more rain. Uh, temperatures tonight, strangely enough are running so much warmer than this time last night. Remember last night we dropped into the 20s. Tonight we're under the warm sector, which is a little bit of a warm front coming our way, and we are 11 to 13 degrees warmer than just last night. I mean, I, I, I love showing that map because it's such a huge change for being near the ocean. New rainfall is not going to be significant, and Seattle gets the least. You guys, Thursday morning will be the wettest time out of the next four or five days. All right, Walter. Well, one woman has died and a gunman on the loose after a home invasion turned violent early Tuesday morning. The woman's father was also home at the time when two strangers broke in. It happened at the Union Crest apartment complex just after one this morning in the Tillicum neighborhood. Lakewood police tell us two masked gunmen barged into one of the apartments, one of them shooting and killing 36-year-old Melissa Williams. The gunmen ran from the area and were able to escape a canine track. Neighbors tell us they were shocked over this violence. It's scary. You know, I have three kids and, uh, you know, bullets could have ricocheted or, you know, whatever went on, you know what I mean? Um, and uh, the walls are thin, you know, and it's it's scary. Lakewood police believe robbery was the likely motive and they're asking anybody with information to please contact them. And new tonight, the woman accused of plotting a crime that ended with the death of Pierce County Sheriff's Deputy Daniel McCartney has pleaded guilty to first degree murder. Deputy McCartney was killed while chasing down two men who ran from a home invasion in January of 2018. Well, prosecutors say 31 year old Samantha Jones, who you see here, planned that crime and got the two other suspects involved. Investigators say one suspect, Henry Carden, you see there, was injured. He took his own life. The other, pleaded guilty to shooting and killing Deputy McCartney. And today, Jones pleaded guilty as well. She'll be sentenced in April, and she could face decades in prison. Well, tonight, five more people from our state find themselves swept up in the global hysteria over coronavirus. And today, the Chinese government reported its first day with more than 100 virus casualties heightening concern worldwide that things are just not slowing down. Now, the virus has spread to at least 26 different countries, including Japan, where at least five people from Washington remain locked down on the cruise ship Diamond Princess after at least 135 people on the boat tested positive for coronavirus. Tonight, we spoke to a woman from Olympia about how passengers are coping with cabin fever. I feel for the people on the interior cabins. They don't have windows. Um, <laughs> they're, they're just in a box with the bed and the TV. So they are first priority in getting outdoor time, which every floor, every group, you know, on certain floors, there's a routine that everybody gets an hour outside up on the decks where they get fresh air and sunshine. Marianne tells us that they've been quarantined for a week now and have at least one more week to go. At last check, coronavirus is now blamed for more than 1,000 deaths nationwide and 42,000 infections. 13 of those cases are confirmed in the U.S. Well, it's special election day across Washington, and many school districts have been keeping a close eye on the results. These are high-impact measures that could set the tone for many districts moving forward. In the Edmond School District, a majority of people voted yes for Proposition 1, a $600 million construction bond. However, because the bond needs a 60% supermajority, it did not pass. This bond would have built an additional middle school, replaced two elementary schools, and create an alternative learning center. In Bellevue, a supermajority of voters passed the largest bond in district history, a $675 million bond. This bond will replace the district's Big Picture School, International School, and Jingmei Elementary. It will also build additions to Newport and Interlake High Schools and provide new security and safety improvements at all schools. In Tacoma, it looks like Prop 1 will pass, 67% yes to 32% no. This is a $535 million bond that will renovate or replace eight schools, but also for safety upgrades for all of their schools. Tonight, we heard from Tacoma's superintendent to get her reaction. 
but I am so excited. And it's just a real testament to Tacoma. This is an incredible community. They care about their students. They care about their children. They care about our schools. I couldn't be happier <laughs> for their, um, you know, their commitment. She says Tacoma has more than 535 projects on their list that this bond will help accomplish. Overall, more than 200 measures will be on the ballot in the special section. It's been a rough start of the year for Boeing. The company had zero orders for jetliners in January, according to the Wall Street Journal. Now, the lack of orders comes as the worldwide grounding of the 737 MAX approaches one year come March. The company did, however, deliver 13 planes last month, and it didn't get any order cancellations. And that's compared to 46 deliveries and 45 jet orders last January. Meanwhile, European arrival Airbus booked a record 274 net new orders in January and delivered 31 jets. A 737 MAX did return to the air for a test flight this week. Here's a look at the jet landing in Kansas City yesterday. The plane came from Seattle earlier in the day and also made a stop in Lincoln, Nebraska. The FAA says it's getting closer to a certified test flight for the embattled 737 MAX. Boeing says it expects the jets to be approved for flight by the middle of the year. Still ahead, two national teachers unions are sounding the alarm on the negative effects of active shooter drills on students as more public schools engage in lockdown drills. It will break down the report and the response from our state's education association.